If I was going with a bunch of young men and women on a bus and we drove by a beautiful mansion, it's just a gorgeous house on top of a hill, on the other side there's the ocean. Just an absolutely beautiful, stunning house. And the, the driveway into the house, there's a gorgeous car parked outside. And on the back of the house, there's this incredible backyard and a swimming pool and all of it. I mean, whatever you can imagine is there. It's like it's a piece of Jannah on earth. And you see the guy walking into his house. We're driving on this bus and we see this guy walking into his house. And I asked these young men and women, do you think that guy's successful? Do you think he's successful? Overwhelmingly, what is going to be the response? Yeah, that's pretty successful. I mean, the guy, look at him. Look at what he's accomplished in life. That's a pretty successful person. Okay. When you take a picture of someone graduating from college, they're shaking hands with the president of the university, they're being handed their diploma, and somebody asks you, what, you, you think that's successful? What are people going to say? You know, it's going to be Muslims and non-Muslims. Everybody's going to say that that is a kind of what? Success. We are going to, I'm going to congratulate my children one day when they graduate from college too, because that's a kind of success. When somebody gets a job, is that a kind of success? Sure. We congratulate people when they get a job. When somebody buys a house, when somebody starts a business, when somebody gets a new car, when somebody gets married, when people accomplish things in life, then we, we celebrate them because these are different kinds of small and big successes. Isn't that true? So the bus keeps driving. And we see a, a man, a homeless man, who's living in a cardboard box on the street. And he looks like he's wearing clothes from a couple of years. And you don't want to go close to him because of the smell. And I ask my students, do you think that guy's successful? What do they say? They say he's not successful. Now imagine if I was riding in this bus, but in this bus there were not Muslim boys and girls, but there were Christian boys and girls, or Jewish boys and girls, or atheist boys and girls, or agnost boys and girls, or Buddhist boys and girls. And I asked them the same exact question. Do you think their answers would be the same? Yep, their answers would be the same. That's the problem. The problem is the way we think about success, and the way we think about failure. For Muslims, it's supposed to be different. All human beings can see it a certain way, that's fine. They have the apparent view of success and failure. But us Muslims, Allah has given us clearer glasses. And once you look at reality through these glasses, you see something other people cannot see. You see something other people cannot see. So when you put those glasses on, then you start thinking about the Book of Allah and you realize that one of the most beautiful captivating, magnificent homes that was ever built was the castle of Fir'aun. It was one of the most amazing homes ever built. And if our bus was driving by the castle of Fir'aun and he was walking into his house and I asked my Muslim children, is that successful? Is that guy successful? What would their answer be? Fir'aun is not successful. He's the one of the worst losers in all of human history. Isn't that the case? What was the second kind of person we, met, we ran into? There was one guy walking into a mansion. What was the other guy? It was a homeless guy. Okay. Ibrahim salam was kicked out of his house. He was told to leave the house. So he's homeless. Well, was he successful? He was. Actually, he's one of the most successful human beings that ever lived. Now the Quran is teaching me that a homeless man is successful. And an incredibly wealthy man is what? A failure. You know what that, the Qur'an is teaching me? The Qur'an is teaching me that success has nothing to do with wealth. And, nothing, and failure has nothing to do with poverty. Success and failure are different concepts for us than they are for everybody else. Some of you want your children to get a good education. I want you to think about this. The parents here. You want your children to get a good education. Why do you want your children to get a good education? Because you want them to be successful. Isn't that the case? You want them to get a job. You want them to get a good career. You want them to have a good life. You don't want them to rent an apartment. You want them to buy a house. 
You want them to go into a good paying profession. You want them to become a lawyer or a doctor. You want them to become an engineer. You know, this is what you want for your kids. You want them to have a good life. Now tell me, sometimes we send our children to school and we send them to a different country or we send them to a different state or a different city. And even before our children left our home to go to these schools, you already notice that they are starting to disobey you. They're becoming disobedient to you. They're becoming less and less and less regard, mindful of their prayer. And you're thinking in the back of your head, maybe, maybe if they go to college in a different city, that things are going to get worse. They're going to become even more rebellious, even more independent, even more careless. But then you think to yourself, but if they don't go to college in a different city, they're not going to succeed. They're not going to succeed. So you know what most parents do? What decision they make? Let them go. Let them go. Then four years go by, and then I get the email. I get the email, my child doesn't talk to me. My child wants nothing to do with me. My child has run off and married a non-Muslim. My child tells me that he doesn't believe in Islam anymore, or whatever, whatever, whatever. That didn't happen overnight. That, there, that process began a long time ago. But you know what? Even the, Muslim, the concerned Muslim parent, maybe they didn't think about success and failure for themselves and for their child clearly enough to make the right kinds of decisions. Because in their head, so long as they graduate from college, they must be what? Successful. The price was too high. The price was not just the tuition. Now, that's not the only, you didn't just pay tuition. You paid the price of guidance in some cases. That's a too high a price to pay. There's a lot of serious things for us to think about as families when we make our decisions.